so I went shopping <laughs> so I went shopping the other day I went to a bookstore and decided to buy some books actually that was my first time walking in a bookstore in like three years I think since a little bit before the pandemic actually I hadn't been in a bookstore in a long time I woke up the other day and I was like you know what I'm gonna drive to town and go to the bookstore it's like a 30 minute drive to go into town and I was like I'm gonna buy some books and I did <laughs> and it felt really good like I don't know you ever like haven't done something in a long time and then you do it and it's like dang that felt almost like enlightening like an enlightening moment that's how I felt I will say like okay between you and me <laughs> I felt a little bit subconscious because I was in there and like there was mad people in there couples like they were together and like friends and I was like alone and that was the first time I went to a bookstore like by myself to shop and it was weird at first I don't know it's just me being in my own head are y'all like that or it's just me it's just me okay cool so anyway I bought a couple of books one of these actually is an arc that I was given and the others are books I bought I also have a fairly box unbox so lots to get through lots to talk about so let's just get into it. Let's discuss the arc that I have that I'm so excited to read. So it is The Hookup Plan. So this book follows London who feels like she just wants to have like a one night stand. She just wants one night of like amazing sex. <laughs> like just one night. And it happens for her. But it happens with her arch nemesis from high school after high school reunion. His name is Drew. Drew is like this millionaire. Problem isn't that they had sex necessarily. Like that it's him. The problem is that he's the same person who basically has to say so whether or not the hospital that she works at will stay open or not so so there's obviously a major conflict here but the whole time drew's trying to show her that he's a nice guy that there is some good to him they're so cute so i'm excited next is discovery of witches i know this book is a tv show and i want to watch it i actually never seen it before but i know people love this story and i do love um i love like dark academia i love like the whole the whole thing so this book follows sayana who is the descendant of a line of witches but she's not really trying to be part of that like whole world well she comes across this alchemical manuscript when she comes across it in the library she kind of banishes it like she doesn't want anything to do with it so she puts it away tries to forget about it unfortunately for her her opening it kind of opened up this portal this doorway and now her world's filled with demons and witches and also a vampire named matthew who i think would be a love interest for her if i'm not mistaken and he's very interested in this world so their two worlds collide they meet i'm sure at some point and cross paths i have no idea where it goes from here the idea that it's set in this very scholarly setting makes me feel like it's kind of dark academia also i love vampire stories i think they're just so fantastic and so fun yeah i think it'll be a good time i also want to get into the tv show so that's gonna be a whole thing for me <laughs> gonna be a whole thing for me the next book i actually have started reading this already and it's called sex and vanity by kevin kwan which you may be familiar with this name the author of uh crazy rich agents which i guess i can also just say that i I also hauled <laughs> I hauled both of these books initially I was going to start reading Crazy Rich Agents first but then I just decided not to because I've already seen the movie so I kind of wanted the new story first before I dove into that one so Sex and Vanity follows Lucy and she is this half Chinese half American girl and she's 19 years old she takes a trip to Italy for her best friend's wedding so while she's in Italy she meets this guy George who she apparently on site hates I haven't gotten to that part yet where they meet I'm only on page 40 so they haven't met yet but when she meets him she instantly hates him and something I'm sure transpires at the wedding that makes things a bit more complicated than that so we fast forward many years later where she sees George again and she of course denies that she has feelings for him which I'm sure is not the truth at all I'm sure she loves his man she starts to get kind of caught in this web of lies that involve her fiance her family her friends and yeah Lucy's gonna have to confront some things about herself some truths and really kind of anchor herself in those truths so I think it'll be um I think it'll have the drama that I've been searching for for a while and so far the writing is actually really interesting I'm surprised like pleasantly surprised by the writing it's very different but it's fun yeah we'll see how it goes I feel like this makes sense to go to this next so next up is crazy rich agents by kevin kwan i think a lot of you are probably familiar with the movie which was literally cinematic excellence it was beautiful the wedding scene is my favorite scene by far it was so creative but this book follows rachel and nick rachel goes with her boyfriend nick to his house his home in singapore for the summer they live in new york well the thing is that nick kind of didn't mention his background like who his family is his family basically owns an empire and they're rich and they're famous she had no idea about these very important details 
very important detail so she gets there and pretty much she has to get like, acclimated to his way of life how he grew up he grew up on private planes and having things done for him he really hasn't you know had the same life that she had she had a very different life than he did she finds herself kind of having to prove herself to his family that she's good enough to be with Nick and Nick has women waiting in line for him they're just waiting for Rachel and Nick to break up so I'm curious to see how different the book is from the movie but I know that there's also two other books after um this one so that's really why I want to start it because I want to see where the books take me where the movie did not so yeah yeah it's gonna be a Kevin Kwan summer <laughs> apparently for me so the next one I actually also started briefly I read only the first chapter because wow these are really long chapters for some reason for me and that book is Ghosts by Dolly Alderton now this is by far one of my favorite book covers because I think that it's so bold. I've seen a lot of book covers in my life. This one is one of the most memorable in my, in my mind for some reason. Kind of reminds me of a Polaroid. This cover is so simple, right? So incredibly simple, but it works. So this book kind of follows Nina who is just turning 32 or 33 years old and her life is kind of spiraling out of control. So she hasn't dated in a while so she decides to download a dating app. She meets a guy, he's very much her type. They have a great time until he ghosts her. And so after he ghosts her she's kind of left to pick up the pieces like of, of her life like a lot of us have had to do after being ghosted or broken up with. She you know has a lot going on. Her dad has Alzheimer's, her mom is acting like it doesn't exist. She's an author and her editor hates her book and so she's struggling to even write at this point but it's kind of more of just like a like documentation of Nina's life and all the things that she's going through literally just life in general and people have said this book is funny the writing is very interesting I'm only on page 21 but how would I explain this writing it's almost so descriptive and concrete in a way that it's like it can definitely turn off a reader but it can also make you really want to read it more and so that's kind of a conflict that I'm dealing with right now because it's the writing is so tight and precise in a way that almost like leaves no room to imagine anything which I don't know if that's a good thing or not I'm not sure that I like that but I'm not sure that I dislike it either very interested in it that's always a good thing Taylor Jenkins Reid loves this book so I mean people love Taylor Jenkins Reid so maybe that means the book is really amazing I don't know <laughs> conclusions um speaking of taylor i also hauled this book maybe in another life by taylor jenkins reed this came out in 2015 so the people have probably already read and loved this and discussed it and i'm just behind but that's fine this book does one of the things that i love it has parallel universes or parallel timelines what if i do this what if i do that and what happens if i choose one of these paths and i love that so this book follows hannah martin which is funny because hannah martin for me is hannah from pretty little liars it's a funny connection but anyway this book follows hannah martin and she has done a lot of things in her life she's moved around a lot kind of a nomad doesn't really have any direction like where she wants to go with her life what she wants to really settle down and do for a career everything's kind of it's kind of up in the air with hannah and i get it you know i get that she lives in new york right now but she actually is moving back to la on her first night back her best friend gabby takes her out to a bar she ends up seeing her ex-boyfriend ethan once like the whole night is done and over with gabby expects her friend to go with her but ethan actually offers her a ride so the story pretty much is like what happens if i go with ethan what happens if i go with gabby how does my life look different with these two situations and scenarios and so i'm excited to see what happens i actually already read the first chapter of this book too just to get a feel for like the writing and i loved it so i bought it but yeah and then last but most certainly not least city of dusk this is a long book which is weird because it's not really that it looks it looks like a thicky it's really it's a thick book but it's not that long it's only like 500 pages i'm gonna read the back because i just feel like it so it says for every realm there is a god for every god there is an heir for every heir there is a price enter a world of bone and shadow magic of vengeful gods and defiant chosen ones in the city of dusk the first book in the dark gods trilogy from a stunning new voice in epic fantasy the four realms life death light and darkness all converge on the city of dusk but the gods have withdrawn their fate from the once thriving and vibrant metropolis and without it all the realms are dying unwilling to stand by and watch the destruction the four heirs to divine power angelica an elementalist with her eyes set on the throne risha a necromancer fighting to keep the peace nicholas a soldier who struggles to see the light and tasia a shadow wielding rogue with a reckless heart will become reluctant allies in the quest to save their city but their rebellion will cost them dearly this sounds good don't it <laughs> i know this sounds like it's going to be epic like it's going to be a really wild ride i cannot wait to get on this okay so we've officially gotten to my favorite part of the video and that is my fairy loot box um listen i don't know what I, i'm just gonna open it 
I don't even know what month this is for because <laughs> I, I was sick I had COVID in May and it's June I think this is the May box but it'll tell me on the inside I'm excited though oh this is the May box I was right boom cloak and dagger is the theme for this month not this month for the month of May so for this box okay I'm a little bit late but bear with me I maybe you maybe y'all know who these people are but I certainly don't that works okay cool so first we have oh red rising bottle opener but this doesn't feel like it's in there <laughs> oh it fell i was like where is, where is it <laughs> okay so here is the red rising bottle opener it looks like it says Audentis fortuna juvat no idea what that means but this is from Red Rising. Yeah, it's a bottle opener, so that's cool. And it was designed by Jess Hawk. Oh, these are really cute. Okay, so I love this one. We have some scrunchies. Ha <laughs> ha, some scrunchies here. And I really love this black and white one, actually. What does it say on it, though? This, it says, you're an absolutely stunning, murderous little creature. I wouldn't know that line anywhere. Obviously, because I used to be obsessed with this book, and I'm not anymore for obvious reasons, but that is from Blood and Ash. <laughs> so I guess these are Blood and Ash inspired scrunchies so next is a stardust tea strainer and it's designed by blanca design let's see i've actually never seen a tea strainer in person before okay that's cute so it says neither here nor there but long ago so that's the the design on the actual hi <laughs> that's the design on the actual um the outer part of the strainer this looks like um a daughter of the moon goddess inspired um mug i'm thinking it just says celestial kingdoms and it's designed by kudraken 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 the book's right here so I, i'm imagining that they're they're a match let's which i kind of hope it, it is because it's it's one of my favorite books visually speaking i haven't read it yet yeah it definitely is from daughter of the moon goddess yeah that is again detail like i feel like with this book in particular so much detail was put into every piece of art that accompanies this book even the inside that is really really adorable okay let's do the cards before i do the book okay the cards we have the empress here's the empress and then we have the aerophant also no idea who they are and then the bookmark this is really giving me anime vibes for some reason i see a serpent here uh if it will focus on it thank you i see like a serpent so i don't know who they are supposed to be i'm gonna open the book now so here we go oh i see purple spread edges <laughs> look happy viewing okay wait a second i've actually um i've seen this i just was watching a video and someone had just talked about this book on that video and i don't remember remember who it is i actually have no clue what this book is about like i've seen it before but i i it's not one that i've ever clocked myself so i i don't know but let's look at the end papers because of course there's artwork in them pretty and purple it looks like they're in a desert somewhere and the edges are just sprayed purple oh but look at the um under the dust jacket is ah uh, i love that yeah that is really nice with the gold foiling on the side as well and in the back of it says neither here nor there but long ago so let's read what this is about because i i genuinely have no idea inspired by stories from 1001 nights the stardust thief weaves the gripping tale of a legendary smuggler a cowardly prince and a dangerous quest across the desert to find a magical lamp neither here nor there but long ago I don't know if I'm saying this name right. Lulai Al Nazari is a midnight merchant, a criminal who, with the help of her jinn bodyguard, hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp. With no choice but to obey or be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son to find the artifact. Aided by her bodyguard, who has secrets of his own, they must survive ghoul attacks, outwit a vengeful jinn queen, and confront a malicious killer from Luli's past. And in a world where story is reality and illusion is truth, Luli will discover that everything, her enemy, her magic, even her own past, is not what it seems, and she must decide who she will become in this new reality. I actually am not that familiar with 1001 Nights. I've definitely heard of it, but this sounds like it'll be an adventure. So I'm looking forward to this, um, but it's exciting. What I am going to do is show you the author letter to the readers, the art on the front. And okay, so as we saw, the bottle opener is 
inspired by Red Rising. Um, and then we know the, the tea strainer is just a Stardust tea strainer. We have the Blood and Ass scrunchies. We have a Daughter of the Moon Goddess mug behind me. And then the bookmarks. Oh, that's who that is? This is a part of Fairy Loot's mythology bookmark collection, which this is Loki. And then this is Kumiho. And on the cards, they feature Brie, Sebastian, and Finian. And they are from These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan, which I have seen circulating online quite a bit. Interesting. Okay. And then for the book, the hardcover design is by Art by Emmeline. And the end papers are designed by Jay Hoka. And then the character art is also by Art by Emmeline. So those are all my halt books. Not a whole lot, but enough. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if there are any books in particular you want specific videos for, let me know. I look forward to making more videos and getting back into the groove of everything and seeing y'all way more frequently than I have been because it's been entirely too long. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!